Unreal Blueprints using Game Instance. Let's review what we know so far. We know levels are, levels are collections of actors. We know when a project starts, a level is loaded. We know projects can be composed of many different levels. And we know each level and the actors within it can contain data. These are pretty simple things we know so far. Fourth, though, is something we've only really touched on in a previous video. When a level is unloaded, any data in it or its actors is unloaded as well, which makes sense. The actors are part of the level. When the level is unloaded, the actors are also unloaded. However, this creates kind of an interesting problem. How do we maintain data across levels? Well, we've already started a conversation about potentially using multiple levels within the same level, and we know we can have different actors, but we're still stuck with the same central problem. When the level unloads, so does all of the data, and we need to save it somehow. So we can start to solve this issue using a special class within Unreal called Game Instance. This is an instance of the game itself. And this is a single instance across the entire game. So the game exists at a higher level than the levels themselves. So despite any level loading going on, for example, using open level by name or potentially in future videos using streaming levels, there is still only a single instance of the game. You are playing a single game. Like all blueprints, game instance, blueprint is a subclass, which means therefore we can add variables functions, macros, and event dispatchers to it. In other words, we can create a subclass of game instance, our own blueprint of it, tell Unreal to use this subclass, and then we can add our own variables, functions, and various things to it, and access those across the entire game or within any particular level, and it will be completely unaffected by level loading. This is incredibly useful because we're creating a central store where we can put whatever we want that will exist within the game itself. So creating it though is a little bit more complicated than just creating a normal blueprint because this is creating a new game instance and we have to not only create it, we have to also tell Unreal to use it and then use special nodes to communicate with it. So let's kind of walk through all of these step by step. The first thing is we want to create a new game instance. So similar to creating a new blueprint uh, from the content browser, we can right click and create a new blueprint. And then under classes, we want to very specifically look for game instance, not platform game instance, which is a special subclass for special platforms like mobile. We want to use just use game instance for now. When we then create that blueprint, it will have a circle icon. This will indicate it is a game instance. And notice in this screenshot, I have used example game instance. Once we've created it and only after creating it, we can then use it. So by default, in fact, Unreal is creating a game instance class for us. However, we can't access the default class. It's created so it can use it, not so we can use it. So we need to create a new game instance subclass, and then we set it within the project settings to tell Unreal to use this game instance we've created. And then we can start to save information to it from there. But we'll walk through these steps in Unreal. Finally, to access the game instance, we use the node get game instance, and then we have to do something a little bit strange. So we've created a subclass of game instance. Game instance is a class within Unreal, and we're creating a subclass based on whatever we decide to name it. However, functionality within Unreal is based on the original generic class, not our subclass. So what we have to do is perform an action called casting. So we're going to use the node get game instance, which is going to return an instance of the generic class. We need to then cast it to our specific cast. So in this, I created example game instance as the name of the subclass. And we need to then cast from the generic to our subclass and then use the output node as example game instance, in this case, to do different things with it, access its variables, events, functions, etc. So what does this all look like? Well, let's move over to Unreal and kind of walk through these steps again. So we're going to create a game instance, set up the game instance, and then finally access it. So over here in Unreal, I've got my sort of starter content I've been using for a while now with an existing cube, which has its own blueprint. So 
We want to start by creating a new game instance, which we want to add within the content browser. I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class. And instead of selecting any of the common classes, I'm going to come down to all classes and then I want to type what I want, which is game instance. And then select it right here. So game instance, and then you see the tooltip says high level manager object for an instance of the running game, spawned at game creation and not destroyed until the game instance is shut down. So it will keep running until the game itself is shut down. And I'm going to select this. I'm going to call this global store. But we could potentially call it whatever we want. And notice once we've created the icon is set and we've got our little circle here and it is a subclass of game instance. Now, just creating it doesn't do a whole lot for us. We need to also set it up and then we need to use the nodes to access it. So our very next step then is to go into project settings and change the default game instance to our subclass. So settings, project settings, and then we want maps and modes, and then way down at the bottom, game instance class. Notice it defaults to the generic game instance. I'm going to click on this drop down and scroll down to game store, and then it will automatically save. So what we've done is we just said, hey, the game instance for this project is something called global store, which was just a subclass of the game instance class. I can go ahead and close this. So now anything that would have happened with game instance will happen with our subclass instead of the default game instance class. This allows us to access its blueprint and change things. So it's a blueprint. So if we double click on it, we can open the blueprint editor. Notice it has its own event graph, but it doesn't correspond to begin play or end play because it exists outside of any particular level. But it also has functions and macros and variables and event dispatchers, just like every other blueprint. So let's just add a simple variable and I'm just going to go with new variable zero and make it instance editable. So it's public outside of this blueprint, compile, save. Okay. We have a game instance that is global store. It has a single variable, not particularly useful at the moment called new var underscore zero. That is a Boolean value. So now in a different graph, I want to then access the variable that's within the game instance. So let's pull up blueprint for cube. And I want to say, okay, on event begin play, I want to pull out of the value that's within the game instance. So as soon as the level starts off and this actor begins play, I want to pull this value out. So what do I want to do this. So first I need to get instance. Right. Yeah, we'll create a new get game instance. Okay, right here. Now remember, this is going to return the generic game instance class. So the return value, and then we need to what? Cast, cast to global store. So there we go. We get it right here. And right here. So now I can connect these like this. So the very next thing that's going to happen is event begin play, cast the global store. What should it cast? Oh, get the game instance generic as the global store, pull this out, which I said multiple steps here. I want to get right here, the target and new value underscore zero, which we see as a bullion over here in the details. So nothing terribly complicated. And again, we can compile and save. So what happens, event begin play happens, it casts to global store. What is it casting? The game instance generic, and it's pulling out a new var, which is a Boolean value. And we can see this all in practice if I play and then stop. So nothing terribly excited happened, but we created a game instance. We created a variable on it, gave it a value, and then in a different graph, pulled a value out of it by getting the game instance, the generic value, casting it to our subclass, and then accessing it via that. Now in a much more complicated project, we could create multiple levels, and then in each corresponding level, access the game instance or save data to the game instance as the level was ending and use it in that way. Again, the game instance class and any subclass we create on top of it 
exists outside of any level loading and then we can use it to save values between levels or save anything that the whole game might use. Examples of values a whole game might use might be volume, game volume, sound effects volume, and a number of other things that different levels might need but exist outside of any one level. And in fact we can basically save whatever we want. So game instance, incredibly useful tool that we will get into in later levels, especially or later videos, especially when we're using multiple levels and moving between those levels, where we have a single store of all the values we want outside of any particular level.